my name is Sam and thanks for checking out this video. Make sure to hit the subscribe button down below, hit the little bell notification, and give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down. As always, a monthly tradition, and it's oddly, I think, always my like highly viewed videos is always my TBRs. I don't know why, but I wanted to talk about my plans for my June TBR. Now, I normally always have content that is within this, but I wanted to make sure, especially for June, that I made sure that I had books that have LGBTQ plus representation, and it actually worked out really well, because they were books that I already had in my pile, because you should always celebrate Pride, but also make sure to year-round diversify your reading. So... These are my June TBR plans. So the first book on my list is Voyager by Diana Gabaldon. This is the third book in the Outlander series. I don't think I'm going to be able to get the whole Outlander realm done this year like my plan was, but I'm just going to keep working my way through them. I've been doing about one every other month, so hopefully I can bump it up to one every month. They're just big and they take a lot of time to get through, so it's kind of hard to fit them in. And yeah, so time traveling, romance, war... I think this one they're in. Yeah, so this is right after Claire goes back to Scotland after everything with Culloden and I'm just so excited. I love I love Claire's daughter and Claire's daughter is like boyfriend, whatever you want to call him, significant other, Roger. I love them. So I, I love when this story starts getting more of the main characters. And yeah, so I'm really excited to keep reading the series. I also plan on reading a star, The Star Touched Queen. I keep saying, uh, The Star Touched Queen by Roshan Chofsky. I read Aru Shah in May and really, really enjoyed it. And I have the sequel to this book. And I've got, I, I kept my TBR this month a little bit shorter. So if I want to add that one in, I will. It's not going to be on the official TBR. But I'm going to give this a read. I know it's supposed to be an Indian fairy tale or Indian mythology fairy tale, um, like retelling. And... Yeah, I don't know. I've just been wanting to read this one for a while. It's been sitting on my shelf for like a year and a half, and Arusha just got me really excited. So I'm excited to eventually delve into this one. And I really like the cover, too. Like, the seeing like, the... Um, maybe it's the Arabian Nights. I know I have a book somewhere that's supposed to be an Arabian Nights retelling. Maybe this is the one? I don't know. I'm just thinking because of the pyramid thing there. Or the, the castle. I don't know. Nonetheless, I'm going to give this one a read this month for sure. Then I plan on doing a reread of Ace of Shades by Amanda Foodie. This is the first book in, it's going to be a trilogy, I believe, last time I checked. And I actually read the arc of this, oh, probably like three months ago, but it came out in the end of April, or maybe the beginning of April, I want to say. But I'm going to give it a reread partially because it has LGBTQ rep in it, as well as people are just finally reading it, so I want to read it and then start having conversations with people about it, because I had so many theories, but I could only talk with one person about them because we were the only people that we knew that had read the arc. So now I can talk to other people about it. But it's like there's essentially Las Vegas in this world and someone's mom's gone missing and there's essentially like a gang war going on within the city that this girl follows, stumbles into while she's looking for her mom. And then there's also a lot of conflicts and battles going on with like the established casinos, almost like another gang war. And this one dude is trying to like balance between the two of them and chaos ensues and some people are psycho and the ending was so good i have so many theories about it and i just need the second book so badly i was also lucky enough at a conference in april my co-worker i was given this arc but my co-worker really wanted it so i gave it to her because i was like i don't think i'm gonna get to it right away you can give it a go and then she gave it back to me she's like i won't get to it before the book comes out so here you go so i'm gonna give it a read <laughs> The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein. This is a new book by Kirsten White coming out in September. I want to say first. Se sorry, September 25th is scheduled release date. I'm actually surprised by how thin it is. But this, she's the author that wrote And I Darken. I didn't like And I Darken, unfortunately. I really want to try and give it a reread. But I feel like the things I've complained about, I've heard people, other people say the exact same thing. And they're like, no, it doesn't really change. So I don't know if I'm going to read it. But I loved the plot of this one. Like the... I want to, I'll probably just read off the back because it's probably easiest. I didn't love the cover reveal. However, in person, it did grow on me a little bit. It's like a metallic-y, at least the arc is. So, and the thing is, the text is lifted and it's like the threading of everything where Frankenstein. So it's not as like faded pink as it looks like online, but you no, know, it looks still, it still looks more like material, like silk material than skin to me. So I don't know, but yeah. I don't want to, like, mess up this, like, summary for some reason. I don't know why this one specifically. So I'll just read 
the back off of it. But Elizabeth Lavenza hasn't had a proper meal in weeks. Her thin arms are covered with bruises from her caregiver, and she is on the verge of being thrown into the streets until she is brought to the home of Victor Frankenstein, an unsmiling, solitary boy who has everything except a friend. Victor is her escape from misery. Elizabeth does everything she can to make herself indispensable, and it works. She is taken in by the Frankenstein family and rewarded with a warm bed, delicious foods, and dresses of the finest silk. Soon she and Victor are inseparable, but her new life comes at a price. As the years pass, Elizabeth's survival depends on managing Victor's dangerous temper and indulging his every whim, no matter how depraved. Behind her eyes, behind her blue eyes and sweet smile lies the calculating heart of a girl determined to stay alive, whatever the cost, as the world she knows is consumed by darkness. And I remember reading that summary and getting chills. I don't know why, but I'm just so excited for this. I'm honestly just so surprised how skinny it is. And yeah, like it's like not even 300 pages of the art. And oh, that's cool. I didn't know on the back too. It says 2018 is the 20th or sorry, the 200th anniversary of Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I didn't know that either. And I know everyone's super hyped for this book. So don't bother emailing me asking me if I can have if, if you can have my arc. I've already given it, promised it to someone else, one of my friends. So but I'm super excited about this one. And I could probably read it once sitting on a weekend too, to be honest. So I also, and I feel like I've probably had this book in my TBR like three months now, I'm gonna get to Fury Born this month, like, <laughs> I'm sorry, I've been trying to get to it, and every time I'm like, oh, now I'm not doing any books, I'll, like, I'll pick up Fury Born, I'm either, like, working for three days straight so I can't sit down and actually read anything, or I get Akafas in the mail, so I'm like, well, I have to read Akafas right away, there's no option for this, so, I'm sorry, but it's out now officially, actually, I think it came out. Yeah, May 22nd, so it's out now. I'm going to get to it this month. I've, I'm have i sure I'm going to put this at, like, the top of the list. And, yeah, so I think I got to about 150 pages in, but it was just so long ago. I'm just going to start from the beginning. <laughs> but there's two alternate timelines, and one of them is, like, this woman went kind of crazy, and there's, like, about her powers. Like, she has, like, massive fire powers and, like, consumes herself. And then another timeline, someone has to prove her powers, and there's, like, tests and they're supposed to overlap timeline or coincide or something like that so i've heard nothing but really positive things about this one so i really 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 need to get to it i also plan on doing a reread of reign of the fallen by sarah glenn marsh this month i read the arc of this in october i think i was specific i remember vividly finishing it in a hotel room in a little village called rainbow lake in like october late october so it's been like almost yeah like eight months or so so i'm gonna give a reread part of the reason to being sarah glenn marsh is actually going to be doing a live like q a talking session in the tbr beyond book group this month um i'll link the group in the description down below so i'm really excited about that she's doing some giveaways of the card sets which i wanted and i made a request like my pre-order like thing for it but i didn't get any so i thought they were all out so maybe you can move some that way I don't know. But yeah, so LGBTQ representation, necromancy, and dark, dark world. And I'm so here for this female-female relationship. I'm so excited for the next book. I'm so, so excited. My friend Amanda has been harassing me, so I finally like, all right, I'll do it. To finally read Ash Princess by Laura Sebastian. I say finally because she read the arc like months ago and she's obsessed with it. And it's one of her favorite books this year. And I know it's supposed to be like pretty traditionally like YA tropey, but it's supposed to be really, really solid writing and really likable characters and really solid plot. So I'm really excited about that. And she, I've read the summary several times and honestly, I just can't ever remember it. But the thing on the top of the cover says, in a land without a queen, the princess must rise. And that cover though. So I'm really excited about this one. And I think I will, we'll get to this one, this one. The, the, every time I look at my bookshelf, I keep looking at the spine and the cover. They're just so pretty. And I can deal with some traditional YA tropes as long as they're used well and written well. So I'm excited for this one. I am definitely making sure I get to A Gathering of Shadows by V.E. Schwab this month. I did a reread of A Darker Shade of Magic and my tune on the book on my reread totally changed. I didn't remember anything of it after the first time I read it. Now I'm obsessed with Delilah and I'm so excited to see where this goes. There's just like everything just got like blown open at the end. There's so many like places it can go now. So I'm really, really excited to give this one a go. There's multiple Londons, and Kel, one of the main characters, is able to hop between them. So he was kind of a letter carrier between all the, like, monarchs, except one of them, because one of them had been shut off, kind of imploded in on itself. And the end of the book, there was just someone made a grab at 
power and it didn't go quite as well as I thought it was. And then we get lots of Delilah. So I'm hoping we'll get more Delilah in this. And I'm just so excited. I think this is on a month TBR in the past few months, but I just never got to it. Um, but I plan on getting to Heart of Iron by Ashley Poston. This is supposed to be a sci-fi Anastasia retelling, and I'm really excited about this. It's also got LGBTQ representation in there, I believe. What I think it's gay representation. I'll have to double check somewhere, but I'm really excited about this. I've heard lots of people really love the story. I've heard there's quite a few editing errors, like mistakes or things that they missed in here, but other than that, I'm really excited about that. I'm just... I, the co I'm obsessed with Russian history. That's what I did my undergraduate degree in, and I've always loved keep reading, like, Russian anythings and getting an Anastasia retelling. It's like, what? And then getting it set in space. It's like, what? And that's my intrigued tone. So I'm just really excited about this, and I know it was originally supposed to be, like, it only got signed up for a standalone, but it's going to have a sequel now. So I'm really excited. Because what else can you do but start another series? It's not possible to have enough series going at the same time. But yeah, Anastasia Space Retelling. Then I'm beyond. Oh my god, I still have goosebumps. I'm, ex I'm terrified and so, so stoked to read the third book in the Rune Trilogy, Allied. It came out in m beginning of May, I believe it was. And... Oh my god, just the second book, Avenge, had so, like, someone's sister needs to get removed and taken out. I just need to know how it happens. And, oh, I love Kaz, so it's just, uh, I don't, I'm scared to read this. And I don't actually know anyone that has read it, so I don't know exactly if I should be scared or not. So, I, I, but I'm, I'm just, I have to read it this month. I can't delay it anymore. I'm so excited. If you don't know, Ruin and Avenge like, were one of my top books of 2017. So it's just so good. I love this series. I love Tintara's writing. Ah. Then I plan on getting to Kill a Kingdom by Alex Alexandra Christo. I think it, yeah, Christo. I, I think it's supposed to be a Little Mermaid-y retelling. I've heard only, like, fantastic things about the writing in this book and this book overall. I think it even has, like, over a four-star thing on Goodreads. Mind you, that could just mean 150 people went and five-starred it reading the summary and have just never actually read it. But, nonetheless, I'm really excited about this one. I've just, I've got a good feeling about it, too. So, the cover is really cool. And I think it's actually supposed to be a standalone, which, which is pretty rare in YA. Um, Princess Lyra is Siren Royalty, and most lethal of them all, and I'm so excited. I know it's supposed to be, like, kind of dark, which I'm kind of here for. Now this one, I actually forgot to put it on my ATVR. I was gonna, and then totally spaced. Someone who watches me, which awesome, uh, messaged me on Goodreads saying they would really highly recommend I read the book, because she's recommended it to a bunch of people, and they keep coming back and being like, oh my god, why did I wait so long to read this? So I remembered this time, I see you girl, and I'm going to finally give Paper Princess by Erin Watts a go. I have the first two books in the Royal series. I love the covers of this series, so I'm hoping I like it. I know it's supposed to be like very gossipy girl kind of trashy stuff. And at first I was like, you know what? Sometimes I like that. Sometimes I don't like that. And then I read Crazy Rich Asians and I'm like, oh no, I'm, I'm totally here for soap opera drama kind of stuff. I'm here for that kind of trash. So I'm going to give it a go. I'm really excited. Plus it's summertime. It's probably like the peak time mood wise that I'm going to be in for this to work for me. So I'm going to give Paper Princess a go by Aaron Watt and I'll have to message that girl back on Goodreads and, and uh, let her know what I think of it in the end. Or maybe if I love it, then I have someone to fangirl with. I'm so excited. But the cover of this book is so, so pretty. And then Broken Prince has like a blue... I don't know where it is. Oh, here it is. And then the second book, Broken Prince, has this cover. And then the third one has like silver gates, I think, on it. It's called like Twisted Palace. And then there's like a 3.5 or 4 book that came out too that has like a purple like scepter thing on it. It's so pretty. I just really hope I like this series because I love the covers. And I want an excuse to buy all of them. I am hoping to start yet another series, because as I said, you can never be reading too many series. But this one's actually done anyway, so I'm okay with that. I'm going to start The Winner's Curse by Marie Ratos Rat Ratkowski. I've heard kind of mixed things about this one, that people either love the character or find it, like, super offensive. I guess she's got says some problematic things or something. I didn't know that until I bought them, or until, like, six months after I bought them, actually. So... 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a go. Fingers crossed that I like it. However, I have noticed in, like, a lot of, like, communities, people, we say that we want, like, good quality content and things that evaluate things in the real world, but when you have a flawed character that has to grow and get over prejudices, people automatically see that acknowledging prejudices exist, that therefore it's pro-prejudism. I don't know. So... I'm gonna give this one a go, and I'm hoping for the best. The cover doesn't give me a lot of faith. I hate white girls in ballroom dresses on the cover acting like this. So, fingers crossed. I also managed to pick up an ARC last month in, or no, yeah, at the very end of April at a conference for Lifelike by Jay Kristoff. Once again, don't message me asking me for it. My friend Muriel has already called dibs on it. She called it for like 20 seconds after I told her I have the arc. So I'm going to read this. It's actually out now. I think it came out on the 20... Oh, no, sorry. It comes out in like two days. So when I post this, it'll be like the day it comes out. Yeah, because it's Tuesday. So it comes out today. But it's Jay Kristoff's new series. And it's supposed to be like kind of like a robotic... I think... Oh, I'm trying to remember... I've seen some of the, I think it's the Australian covers, but it's like Romeo meets Juliet meets Blade Runner and then something else. I'll put the, put the picture here, but it just sounds really, 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 really cool. But there's some romance and lots of robots and I am total trash for Jay Kristoff's writing. I loved Illuminae and I love Amy Kaufman's solo stuff and I love The Nevernight, the first two books anyways. I need the third book soon and I have the third no I have all three of the, his Lotus War trilogy too that I'm going to try and get to reading this later this year too so I'm going to give this one a go and I I, I have zero doubt I'm going to enjoy it I'll, I would be honestly floored if I didn't oh your body is not your own your mind is not your own your life is not your own I keep saying I'm excited I'm sorry I'm so repetitive but I'm just super excited I get so excited talking about books I can't help it I had to make myself not just binge this whole series which I honestly just feel like it's probably not good for my, like, I'm going to become obsessed with it and want to keep rereading it until the film adaptation comes out. But I'm going to pick up China Rich Girlfriend this month. I wanted to read it as soon as I finished Crazy Rich Asians, but I, I controlled myself. And this is the second book in the Rich People trilogy, I think it's called, and by Kevin Kwan. I was total trash for Crazy Rich Asians. Oh my god, I think I read it in like six hours. And oh, I just love it. But it's just going to continue on. From where the first book left off. I assume there's going to finally be a proposal. Because there wasn't one at the end of the first book. Which I was surprised by. And once again it's kind of. It's summer weather. This is my peak time for reading contemporary trashy soap opera books. But I'm getting ready for the. I'm going to try and read all, all three books. Before the film comes out in August. So I can do this one in June. And then Rich People Problems in July. And then I'll probably reread Crazy Rich Asians in August. Before the film comes out. <laughs> Because I just want to, like, do a refresher. I think I'm going to do more of those kind of videos that I did for Ready Player One of, like, book versus movie. And, yeah. And the Crazy Rich Asians will be one. And I'm also curious to know if the whole Rich People Problems trilogy is getting... All of them are getting film adaptations or just the first one. And to complete my reread of The Hunger Games, I'm going to be reading A Mockingjay this month. And I'm going to make sure I put it probably right before I read, like... Harry Potter or one of my rereads that I know I like because I know when I read this book the first time it was such a letdown of a conclusion like it really opened my eyes to be like wait has there ever really been any good conclusions to a book trilogy no this is the perfect example of when one falls flat but I'm gonna reread this series so I'm gonna give Mockingjay a go and almost done rereading all the Harry Potter books I plan on reading Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince this month and I honestly don't remember like anything of this book I can't even remember much of the plot of the film I know Snape is in it heavily but that's it so I'm really excited to give this one a ring read but it's the fifth uh, no sorry sixth sixth book I don't even know I don't need to explain it's Harry Potter what are you doing with yourself if you don't know what this is? And lastly, I plan on re continuing my, not reread, continuing my read of the Heroes of Olympus series with book number two, The Son of Neptune. This is, oh no, it's got Percy in it. I honestly haven't even read the summary for it. I just know that I enjoyed the first one. I assume Percy Jackson was coming back in it, and he is, well, according to the back. Percy is confused, Hazel is supposed to be dead, and Frank is a klutz. So, I don't know what that means, but... I'm gonna give it a read. So that is my June TBR. Let me know in the comment section down below if you've read any of these and what you thought of them, or let me know what you plan on reading this month. And I'd love to hear, because if I'm missing books on my TBR, I need to know ASAP.
Make sure to check the description down below for links to these books as Goodreads pages, as well as links to my social media. If you follow me, I will happily follow you.